I did not have a plan. I didn't know what to do. Started typing up my resignation. My whole life, I had been taught that you can't quit a job until you have another job lined up. Today, I'm gonna be talking about how I quit my job without a plan. Huh? I know it sounds kind of irresponsible, and honestly, it kind of is, but let's get into it. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and let's hop right into the video. Give y'all some little background about me first so that you can understand that this was actually a crazy, crazy decision for me. I never thought in a million years that I would do without having some type of backup plan or something else lined up, especially being out of state. I'm originally from Madison, Wisconsin. It is a small, very white town in the middle of Wisconsin. And the only thing that it really has there going for itself is the university. So we have this really prestigious university, the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So I was a double major, double minor. I majored in political science and legal studies and I minored in African American studies and criminal justice. Went to Washington DC for a semester and interned for the NAACP. Made the Dean's List a couple of times. So I, I excelled in college. My main goal was to get into Harvard Law. That was the plan when I was in Washington DC and I did that internship, I ended up meeting someone. The end of my senior year, I had decided that I did not want to go to school right away. So next thing you know, I got a letter about joining a national teaching program now I personally never thought about teaching I have 10 brothers and sisters so I wasn't really considering it but when the recruiter was telling me that they were partnered with all of the top law schools including Harvard he was telling me that there's a huge disparity in the school to prison pipeline and a lot of the time it falls on black and brown kids so once I thought about that and thought about like my siblings and just based on what I've seen, I was kind of like, this is something that I should consider doing. I also wanted a break from school for a little bit. So I applied and rank where you want to go. So DC was number one, two was Miami, and then the third one was Atlanta. So I got placed in the Miami core, so I ended up moving to Miami and I taught for two years. My experience teaching baby it's like one of the hardest jobs in the world i taught at my first school me and the principal were not getting along like she really was trying to get me fired constantly nitpick at me i had to constantly go to her office she would constantly think she could talk crazy to me but i'm like baby i'm a new teacher but i'm not a weak teacher you're not about to talk to me any kind of way we had our very first fire alarm and we did not feel prepared for it. So me and another new teacher asked her if she could send us a document that kind of outlined the fire drill. And do y'all know what this lady responded? She said, it's common sense. Don't you ever email me something like this again. What? Remember another time, these two kids ended up getting into a fight in my class. So as I'm calling in the security guard to break them up, the security guard tells me that the principal needs me in her office. I get in the office and she's talking about like documentation. Like she's talking about something completely different than some papers I had to sign. And I told her like, there was just a fight in my classroom. I'm like, and it got pretty crazy. And this lady brushed it off. Well, they gonna do what they do. One of the mothers of the student that got into a fight came up to the school, went past the security guard, was running through the school looking for the little boy who had fought her son. And the woman was going off, literally looking for that boy. Everyone was like trying to stop her and it turned into this huge situation. The principal was walking me and she's like, yeah, this is just crazy. I said, I told you about the fight that happened. You didn't say people was getting choked out and stuff. You ain't say it was that bad. Girl, you brushed it off so quick. How was I supposed to tell you? Like she tried to really put it back on me. It was not giving. So I ended up teaching at another school. This school, although the administration was a little bit better, it was just kind of all over the place. Like there was fights all the time. It got to a point where a teacher kept a spray bottle of water in her classroom so that when the kids would fight, she would just start spraying them with water. 
We had district visits every single day where people in suits would come from the district and critique us on what we were doing wrong, even though we were trying to do the best we could. It was my second year and final commitment to the program. So I had kind of decided that I kind of didn't want to do teaching anymore and that I actually wanted to move to Atlanta. I ended up applying and applying and applying and applying and applying to different jobs. My timeline was running out because my lease was up. Month to month was gonna be way too expensive in Miami. Like it was just getting crazy. So I had made the executive decision to start applying to teaching jobs. I started applying to teaching jobs and I started getting a lot of interviews and doing well, getting offers and things like that. But mind you, I was done with teaching. I did not want to teach. But in my head, I was like, okay, this is my way to get to Atlanta. I could accept it for now and then I could still find another job. But I found a job. They actually flew me out for an interview, nailed it. So got the offer, moved to Atlanta. This is where things kind of took a turn. I was again just really really miserable teaching I was dragging myself to get out of bed every day like I was so unhappy I was so depressed I'd be like crying in the car on the way to work I would just have so much anxiety about even walking into the school because I just knew what I was getting myself into it was just a lot and they had a lot of kids and just me in a classroom like over 30 I feel myself being a little meaner I remember one time I told my student to get off her phone and she told me, you not my mama. So I told her in response, I don't want to be your mama. Not being my normal self. When you're a teacher, there is a lot of pressure to stay the full year. At any other job, it doesn't matter. You don't have like a certain timeline. Like you can, you know, quit putting your two weeks, put your month notice and you're good. I was like, I, I can't quit in like the middle of the year like I can. I didn't know what to do. I was going to church at the time and they talked about doing the Daniel fast together. I was like, okay, I'm going to do the Daniel fast. I did the Daniel fast with my friends and for 21 days we fasted, we prayed. I was really, really praying for purpose, praying for a sense of direction as to what to do because I was just so unhappy with where I was at. When I tell you like the next day after i finished the fast i was sitting there crying i did not want to go into that school and i just remember crying and something like just this overwhelming sense of peace just came over me and it was just like just quit and i was like is god telling me to quit right now like is this at that moment I didn't overthink the kids, the parents started typing up my resignation. I gave them a month notice. I turned it in and I met with my coach. My coach was like kind of trying to convince me, but she could honestly tell that I had already made my mind up. So she didn't push it. She went to the principal. It was like, I was holding on this secret for like a month. Like I could not tell my students that I was leaving. I did not have a plan. I was applying to places, applying, 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 but networking is so real here and I just moved. So it just was not working out how I thought it would, but I just still knew I had to quit. Thankfully, I had money saved up for a rainy day. And I was like, honestly, this is a rainy day for my mental health. So I gotta do what I gotta do. I'm like, I can save back up but I kind of have to take this plunge and see what else is out there for me. Otherwise, I'm gonna be literally teaching for years and years and look back and be like, what the fuck? So I told them during school hours, the parents got the letters. Yeah, there was some backlash. Yeah, parents were texting me some crazy ass shit, but I was like, I have to put myself first. So I quit and it was just like a breath of fresh air. I will say, I feel like it was like a good break for my mental health. I feel like I needed that. And then I got the job that I'm at now. So right now I am a program coordinator at this really great nonprofit. I'm in a good place right now. I feel like God truly, truly taught me a lesson in trusting his plan. I wouldn't change a thing in the world, but I just knew it was time for me. And you have to make a decision to choose yourself and your mental health over what society thinks is the right thing for you to do. Cause my whole life I had been taught that you can't quit a job until you have another job lined up. And yeah, that is a good idea. It is in a perfect world. It's ideal. 
But in the real world, when it gets to a place where things are toxic and your mental health is declining, we only have one life to live. So you have to put yourself first. No reward without risk. And sometimes in life, you have to take risks. You can't just go by what society thinks is the right way to go. Just have in mind that everything's gonna be okay on the other side. You have to believe that everything is gonna be okay. But yes, that is all that I have for you guys. Please stay tuned for my future videos because they will be coming. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.